The Nepal Rastro Bank has geared up to introduce the monetary policy today with Governor Mahaprasad Adhikari saying that the monetary policy for the fiscal year 2023-24 would be issued in line with the budget policy. Governor Adhikari also says the monetary policy would focus on achieving economic growth, controlling inflation and increasing loans in the productive sector. Good morning, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. The Nepal Rashtra Bank gears up to introduce monetary policy for the ongoing fiscal year today, emphasizes financial stability and revival of the national economy. Investigations on the Lalita Nivas land scam intensifies as the Supreme Court paves way to arrest the alleged individuals. Five officers appointed to identify the mastermind of the gold smuggling case. Eleven people killed in a suspected arson attack on a bar in the northern Mexican border city after an expelled patron set it ablaze with a mo Molotov cocktail. And three matches of the FIFA Women's World Cup slated for today. The first match between Sweden and South Africa currently underway at the Wellington Regional Stadium. The Nepal Rastra Bank has made preparations to introduce the monetary policy today. The meeting of the board members of the Nepal Rastra Bank has been scheduled for this morning to endorse the monetary policy. The Nepal Rastra Bank has said that the monetary policy this year will target releasing loans to the productive sector. During the meeting of the Finance Committee held last Wednesday, Governor Mahaprasad Adhikari informed that the monetary policy for the ongoing fiscal year would be implemented with plans to control inflation and manage the productive sector. The Nepal Rashtra Bank says that the major challenges in maintaining financial stability in the country are revival of the national economy, inactive loans and increasing illegal trade. Meanwhile, the private sector has been urging the government to scrap the prohibition of taking loan for more than 12 million rupees by an individual in the share market and reduce risk on loans on real estate, share and vehicles from 150% to 100%. Former officials of the Nepal Rashtra Bank have suggested that the monetary policy must not be introduced to serve various interest groups. The Central Investigation Bureau of Nepal Police, CIB, has intensified investigations on the Lalita Nivas land scam after the Supreme Court paved way to arrest the alleged individuals. The Supreme Court has paved way for police to arrest the individuals alleged of their involvement in the Lalita Nivas land scam by scrapping the writs filed by 17 alleged convicts and four that had been arrested last month. Prior to this, four accused, including Bhatpatini supermarket chain operator Min Bahadur Gurung, had filed a writ at the Apex Court. However, the court has scrapped the writs as well as the interim order issued last year directing not to arrest the 17 alleged convicts. Likewise, Kalathar Deuja, who had been released on 27th of June, was again arrested yesterday. Police investigations have revealed involvement of Deuja in the scam in the Nepalese year 2049 when he was the chief of the Land Revenue Office in Delhi Bazaar. Former election officer Sudhir Sharma... Sudhir Kumar Shah, Officer Gopal Karki and former Chief of the Land Revenue Office, Delhi Bazaar, Dharma Prasad Gautam are also in police custody. Likewise, investigation is being carried out on a former Secretary of Kathmandu Municipality, Ward No. 4, Shivaji Bhatrai, Officer at the Survey Department, Dhaman Bahadur Karki, Fake Tenant, Baburaja Maharzan and former Head of Samarjan Company, Ramesh Kumar Pokhrel for organized crime. 14 out of 20 alleged convicts in police custody are former government officials. Likewise, Sipika Khetan of Khetan Groups has been arrested on charge of purchasing government land. Police have said that she had eight annas of land in her name. Furthermore, police investigations have revealed that 20 ropanis of land was in the name of DFL Group, in fact DLF Group, which is operated by Bishal Group and Goyal Group. The Department of Revenue Investigation has appointed five officers to conduct a detailed investigation on the smuggling of gold from Thruvan International Airport last Tuesday. The department, meanwhile, has not revealed the names of the officers. 
Investigations and collection of statements from 10 individuals that have been arrested so far for their involvement in the gold smuggling case is underway. Likewise, two officers of the Customs Department at the airport have been suspended. The Department of Revenue Investigations has said that officers have been alerted to identify other individuals involved in the gold smuggling case. The team of five officers is set to conduct a detailed investigation on the case and submit the report to the authorities. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal departed for Italy yesterday to attend the United Nations Food Systems Summit. Premier Dahal will be participating in the summit that is scheduled to be held in Rome from 24th to 26th of July. Prime Minister Dahal is scheduled to address the official opening session of the United Nations Food Systems Summit on Monday in the capacity of the Chair of the Global Coordination Bureau of the Least Developed Countries. On the sidelines of the summit, Prime Minister Dahal is scheduled to hold meetings with high-level dignitaries of the United Nations, including the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, the Executive Director of the World Food Program and the President of the International Fund for Agricultural Development. Prime Minister Dahal is also scheduled to participate in a program in Rome organized by the non-resident Nepali Association. The 13-member delegation led by Premier Dahal includes Minister for Agriculture and Livestock Development Beduram Pushal, Foreign Secretary Bharat Raj Paudel and members of the Prime Minister's Secretariat Ganga Dahal and Ramesh Malla. In our Public Voice segment, we had asked people in several provinces regarding the delay in appointment of judges at courts, which has been causing delay in justice delivery. Let's take a look at what they had to say. राजनीतिक प्रवृत्ति A woman has been shot dead in the Nepal-India border region. The incident occurred across Dasgaza in Mukhyapata Musaharnia rural municipality of Dhanusha at 8.30 p.m. last night. Dhanusha police have said that an unidentified group shot the woman and absconded towards Indian territory. The identity of the deceased woman has yet to be revealed. Time now for our segment, Public Pulse, where you text us with the opinion. Public Pulse. Here's the question. Why has the provision of having two drivers in long-distance vehicles not been fully implemented? The options are A, lack of monitoring, B, vehicle operators' high-handedness, and C, compulsion of drivers. Voting is on. Type any WS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. Eleven people were killed in a suspected arson attack on a bar in the northern Mexican border city of San Luis Rio, Colorado, after an expelled patron set it ablaze with a Molotov cocktail, authorities in the state of Sonora said. Sonora state prosecutors said preliminary findings showed the suspect was young, male and highly intoxicated at the time of the attack in the early hours yesterday and had been thrown out of the bar for being disrespectful to women there. He then came back and threw a kind of Molotov cocktail at the doors of the bar, according to a statement from prosecutors in the state, which shares a long border with Arizona. 
Four of the 11 dead were women and four more people were being treated in hospital for their injuries, they added. Santos Gonzalez, the mayor of the city, said that the suspect, a man, had been arrested by police. Cambodia's Prime Minister Hun Sen's son, Hyung Manit, and his wife voted earlier today in the country's general election. Polling stations all across the country opened at 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. local time in an election with no viable opponent after the main opposition candlelight party CLP was disqualified over paperwork technicality. The contest is effectively a one-horse race and a long-serving Prime Minister Hyun Sen, who has held on to power for 38 years, has brushed off concern about the election's credibility amid criticism of a crackdown against his opponents. In late December 2021, a Cambodian People's Party CPP spokesperson confirmed that Hyun Manit, the oldest son of Hyun Sen, had been chosen as his official successor. According to a leaked list of new government cabinet members posted on a Telegram channel dated February 21, 2023, Hyun Manit was named as the next leader of the Cambodia. Thousands of Israelis opposed to the judicial overhaul sought by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu gathered in protest as pressure mounts on his right-wing government to scrap a bill that would curtail the Supreme Court's powers. The government bid to change the judiciary has plunged Israel into one of its worst political crises, sparking nationwide protest, denting the economy and stirring concern among Western allies. Tens of thousands protested across the country, including around 100,000 people in the business hub of Tel Aviv. Netanyahu's religious nationalist coalition says the bill, which parliament is scheduled to vote on by Monday, is needed to balance out the branches of power. Critics say the amendment is being rushed through parliament and will open the door to abuse of power. Commanding 64 of the Knesset's 120 seats, Netanyahu's coalition on July 10 won the first of three required votes for the new bill to be written into law. Critics argue that this judicial oversight helps prevent corruption and abuses of power. Proponents say the change will facilitate effective governments by curbing court intervention. The heaviest rains in more than 40 years badly damaged roads, bridges and buildings in the Canadian Atlantic province of Nova Scotia yesterday and police said four people were missing, including two children. The storm, which started on Friday, dumped more than 25 centimetres on some parts in 24 hours, the same amount that usually lands in three months. Authorities have declared a state of emergency in Halifax, the province's largest city and four other regions. The regional municipality in Halifax reported significant damage to roads and infrastructure and urged people to stay at home and not use their care. Houston citing police said two children were missing after their car was submerged. In another incident, a man and a youth were missing after their car ran into deep waters. Heavy rainstorms swept across northeast China on Saturday, leading to floods in residential areas which forced authorities to relocate people from inundated areas. The meteorological authorities in Heilongjiang issued a blue alert for rainstorms yesterday. By last night, 77.5 millimeters of rain had fallen in Harbin City in Heilongjiang province with flooded roads bringing traffic to a near standstill in some areas of the city. Provincial Water Resources Department and Meteorological Bureau issued a risk warning for river flooding and a yellow alert for mountain torrents Use, urging local governments and residents to take appropriate precautions. China has a four-tier weather warning system, with red representing the most severe warning, followed by orange, yellow and blue. Civil authorities have activated emergency plans to evacuate residents affected by heavy rains and carry out drainage works. 
Time now for sports update. Sports news. Three matches of the FIFA Women's World Cup are slated for today. Sweden plays South Africa in the first match of the day. The Group G match, which will be played at the Wellington Regional Stadium, kicked off at 10.45 a.m. Nepal time. Considered the powerhouse of football in the past, Sweden have not been able to secure the top podium places in recent tournaments. Placed third in the FIFA rankings, Sweden were crowned the Euro champions back in the year 1984 and had finished third in the previous edition of the World Cup while having to settle for a silver medal in the Tokyo Olympics. They were the runners-up of the 20, 2003 three edition of the tournament. Meanwhile, South Africa are playing their second World Cup. The two teams are facing each other for the first time. In the Group E match slated for today, runners-up of the previous edition, the Netherlands play Portugal. Speaking ahead of the match, Dutch coach Andreas Jonker had criticized FIFA for the poor quality of the training ground. The Netherlands had seen off Portugal 3-2 in the group stage of the Euro 2022. The clash between the two nations will kick off at 1.15 p.m. Nepal time. In Group F, France are taking on Jamaica. Before their first match of the tournament, France have been plagued with injuries. While France had reached the semifinals of the 2011 World Cup, it is the maiden appearance at the tournament for Jamaica. The clash between the two sides begins at 3.45 p.m. Nepal time. Andrei Rublev survived an epic clash against Francisco Serendolo at the Swedish Open yesterday for the right to take on top seed Kaspar Ruud in today's final. The second seeded Russian battled the Argentine for nearly three hours in Bastard before finally eking out a 7-6-6-7-6-3 win in a thrilling match full of long rallies. Rudd had earlier put away Italy's Lorenzo Massetti in straight sets, 6-3, 7-5, as the Norwegian looks to reclaim the title he won here in 2021. Albert Ramos' Vinola set up a Swiss Open final date with Pedro Kacin with a semi-final win over Serbia's Mayomir Kecmanovic yesterday. The former Swiss Open champion broke Kecmanovic's serve six times to capture a 6-2, 6-3 win over the Serbian in just over an hour and a half. It took Argentina's Kacin just over an hour to secure his spot in the final against the Spaniard with a breezy 6-3, 6-1 win over Serbia's Hamad Medjedovic in the second semi-final. Defending champion Jonas Vingegaard of Denmark was set to win his second Tour de France title after keeping a close tab on his main rival and 28th stage winner Slovenian Tadej Pogkar in a final emotional mountain ride of the race. Following Saturday's stage, the Jumbo Visma rider said he and his team stuck to their plan throughout the race but refused to reveal their strategy to crack Pogar. Vingegaard said he thought it was healthy for the sport to have good rivalries and that he hopes to go for a third toward victory next week. Going into yesterday, in fact, today's final stretch into Paris, Vingegaard leads Pogar by 7 minutes and 29 seconds with his United Arab Emirates teammate, Britain Adam Yates, in third position, 10 minutes, 56 seconds off the pace. Before wrapping up, here's a look at the top stories once again. The Nepal Rashtra Bank gears up to introduce monetary policy for the ongoing fiscal year today, emphasizes financial stability and revival of the national economy. Investigations on the Lalita Nivas land scam intensifies as the Supreme Court paves way to arrest the alleged individuals, five officers appointed to identify the mastermind of the gold smuggling case. Eleven people killed in a suspected arson attack on a bar in the northern Mexican border city after an expelled patron set it ablaze with a Molotov cocktail. And three matches of the FIFA Women's World Cup slated for today. Sweden plays South Africa in the first match of the day that kicked off at 10.45 a.m. Nepal time. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.